Let's see. Uh, Bentham, okay, Bentham believed that behavior was not affected by custom and habit and therefore could be calculated. So these are some differences between, again, these are modifications of Mill, of John Stuart Mill. Uh, and I'm going to give you a practical example. Okay? Mill argued, on the other hand, that custom and habit do influence economic behavior, and though it may be predictable, it's not calculable. All right? uh, Bentham, Bentham's a guy, and this is a character with a modern example. He would have said, well, um, if you, how many of you old enough to remember chick jeans? Okay, not a good example. You remember them? Okay, you remember. You don't talk about them. <laughs> Some of y'all are designer jeans haven't always been there, by the way. You know, I remember I was in junior high when you know Calvin Klein made his debut, really. So, uh, and that was the first mass-produced designer jean. If you weren't aware of that, there you go, trivia for the day. Uh, Calvin <laughs> Klein came out, and then everybody's trying to do the designer jeans thing because you know now Levi's and Lee and uh, Wranglers are not good enough. You need Calvin Klein's. You know. And then it was, you know, it was uh, chick, chick jeans came in into it, and, uh, and then it was, you know, I don't know, somewhere down the line was guest jeans, and, you know, all this uh, that you may be more familiar with. I don't know, guests kind of died off. Uh, Calvin Klein makes what underwear now, I don't know. But <laughs> that's about it. You know, CK, perfume and underwear. Uh, but uh, there was a company that, that had a chick jeans. Um, I'm trying to make sure that was the brand. I'm pretty sure that was the one. And what happened was they, Chick was, you know, considered kind of a, a, a name brand, you know, a designer jean, right? They came out, they were not as big as, as uh, Calvin Klein, but they were, they were a pretty big, pretty good knockoff. Well, they sold their product, their, you know, they gave their uh, product line to, it was either, came, I think it was Kmart, Target, something like that. So don't quote me on this, but this is kind of how it went, all right? Now, have you ever heard of Chick Jeans? Got mostly in here, so young. Yeah, one guy knows what I'm talking about. Because they died off, all right? <laughs> and why do you think that was? Because they were cheaper, right? I mean, they went from, you know, being at the stores, like, you know, I don't know if Dillard's carried them or not, but they went from being carried in more... Uh, you know, prestigious type stores to being carried in a uh, more common place that was more affordable. Why wouldn't people buy them then? They're more affordable now. Why wouldn't you buy them? They're not as rare. I mean, everybody has them. How can you be an individual if everybody else has them? How can it be special? I think, okay. I think I'm trying to relate that to, to another person um, talking about our money problem. He's like, I don't get what we're going to debt. Can't we just print more money? No, it's just like it doesn't it doesn't work like that. It's like we lose value. It's like you're oh, you, so you paying me a lot of money if I pick this blade of grass up, you know, and try to sell it to you. Of course you won't, because you we're gonna have to pick one up for sale. Okay, exactly. It becomes more uh, common, so it's less value. You know, we do have wire precious jewels, <coughs> valuable liver air, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's a good point. Um, but what you know, what what's another angle on why they actually got devalued, not just because they were, maybe they were a little more affordable, maybe it wasn't that big a difference in price. What happened though when they went to the common market? They lost the prestige. They lost the prestige. That association with, when we go to some certain places, and I won't, you know, we're not thinking high quality about certain things, or we're not thinking about, frankly, you can buy name brand stuff, and it's not sometimes any better quality than something you buy at the local, you know, we're from Arkansas, you know where, so, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not always the case. Sometimes it's just, oh, I have whatever, and they cost 70 bucks a pair, or 120 or whatever, and so, that's the thing that's in now, you know. Well, they're not any better quality always than, you know, plain old Levi's or Lee or whatever. Um, so it's not always quality. And Levi's says, you know, quality never goes out of style, right? Uh, I guess maybe they got something. They've been around for a long time. They're still making jeans that people buy. So, uh, but my point is, is exactly that. That Bentham was wrong in that instance. He would have been wrong. Because he would say, no, no, no. If you give them the same product at a cheaper price, they're going to flock to Kmart.
Kmart, Walmart, wherever they're selling these jeans. No, he misunderstood society. He did not think that one through. Mill says, oh yeah, custom and habit definitely influence. People are still going to go to the mall, and if that product is no longer at the mall, and it's at a, a more common place, they're going to still do business at the mall, and they're going to buy whatever the mall's got, for example. Okay, they're going to go to, you know, Dillard's or Famous Bar or whatever, you know, uh, whatever all those other type places are. So, uh, he, he made that argument um, that, you know, they, they do affect custom and habit. And uh, it, it can be predicted, but you can't, you can't put this in a calculator. I mean, you can't accurately predict exactly how it's going to affect things. So, that's all Mill's trying to say. And I think we can see, and using that example that Mill was a little more thought, thoughtful about that opinion. Um, and, and as I mentioned, he emphasized the quality of pleasure. All right? So he deviates from pure utilitarian thought as we originally saw it. Okay. Now, another thing he says is he approved of some departures from the principle of the laissez-faire. Now, that's capitalism. Laissez-faire... Let it be capitalism, all right? Let, let the market run itself capitalism. While Bentham did not. Bentham was a pure capitalist, and he didn't see any point in messing with stuff. And see, our country has gone along the lines more of what Mill, you know, those deviations of, well, uh, yeah, we're well, capitalists, sort of, but we have the Social Security program, you know, uh, and we have lots of welfare programs and ways to get money if you're poor and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have those little seeds of capitalism, uh, I mean of socialism that are that are growing in our country. Now we've got free health care for lots of people. Lots of people are on free health care. All right, they're not paying for it. It's free. You're paying for it. I'm paying for it. They get it free. All right, 